Hello guys, well welcome to the projectiles video. Um, in the video I am going to go through the examples from the textbook and break it into chunks um, based on the exercises that they sort of fall under. So here we go. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to look at is the horizontal projection. And what this means is when something is projected horizontally. Nothing more complicated than that. So if something is projected horizontally, it will have an initial speed. And naturally what's going to happen, it will go horizontal, but however it will start to make that sort of direction and fall naturally under gravity. So what we have got here is we have got an x distance and we also have got a y distance of where it started from oops that's going to be y um, where it started from. So if we have a look at the horizontal motion Um, it's modelled as a constant velocity and to find out this distance all we're going to do is s or displacement is equal to the speed let's call it velocity because we're working with displacement times the time okay um, there's no acceleration as we are working with constant velocity now for a vertical motion, the particle or whatever it is that it is projected is um, acted on with a constant acceleration due to gravity. Constant So, what when we have got questions, what we need to do is we need to work out the horizontal motion and the vertical motion separately. So, the first example I've got is example number one from our textbook. So, a particle is projected horizontally at 25 meters per second from a point 78.4 meters above a horizontal surface. So, drawing this as a diagram, a particle is projected horizontally at 25 metres per second. From a point 78.4 metres above the horizontal. Naturally, the trajectory is going to look like that. So, um, what I need to do, I need to find the time taken by the particle to reach the surface. So how long does it take from the particle to get here down to here? So I'm actually looking at a vertical um, distance here from where it started to where it ends up. And therefore, I'm going to resolve in the vertical direction, taking down as my positive. So, my displacement is going to be positive 78.4. My initial velocity is zero in the downwards direction. Remember, this 25 meters per second is in the horizontal direction. My initial velocity in the vertical direction is zero. I don't know the velocity, the final velocity. My acceleration is 9.8 and the time is what I am looking for. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So S 78.4 is equal to ut plus a half at squared. 
So simplifying this, I get 78.4 is equal to 4.9 t squared. 78.4 over 4.9 is t squared. Therefore, the square root of that answer, whatever that becomes, will be t. And when I type that in, I actually get a nice value of 4 seconds. Okay, so that was part A. For part B, find the horizontal distance travelled at that time. So we're working with this time here that I've just worked out. So my horizontal distance, S is equal to VT. V being my general velocity. So my displacement, which is what I'm looking for horizontally, is equal to my initial velocity which was 25, times the 4 seconds, which is the time, and therefore my displacement in a horizontal distance is 100 metres. Okay, looking at example number 2 then. So, a particle is projected horizontally with a velocity of 15 metres per second. So, I'm going to draw a diagram. Projected horizontally at 15 metres per second, not forgetting my 5 this time. Um, my trajectory is going to look something like that. Find the horizontal and vertical components of the displacement of the particle after 3 seconds. So it's asking me for my horizontal component, which is my x, and my vertical component, which is my y here. So, um, resolving vertically, downwards as positive, I have got a displacement of y, u is 0, v I don't know, a is 9.8, and t equals 3 from the question up there. Same formula, s equals ut plus half a t squared. So y is equal to 0 t plus half times 9.8 times 3 squared. So y is equal to the value of this, which I'm going to type into my calculator. So 0 0.5 times 9.8 times 9 gets me 44 Point one meters. So that's my y component. What about my x? So I know when I resolve horizontally, I know s equals vt. So x, which is my displacement, my initial speed was 15 times my time, which was 3 seconds. I was given that in the question up here. And therefore, x is equal to 45 metres. Okay, so part B says, that was part A. Part B says the distance of the particle from the point of the projection after 3 seconds. So basically, what it's asking me to find is this distance of my dashed line. So I've got a nice right angle triangle here. So... For part B, I've got my y distance, which was 44.1. And I have got my x distance, which was 45. And I'm looking for the distance here, because the question is asking for the distance of the particle from the point of projection. This was the point of projection here, when it was projected like that. And that is the distance between the point of projection and where it ended up. So, basic Pythagoras. Gets me 63, so I get 
three metres to two significant figures. Easy. Okay, looking at my final example for this section then. Um, here we go. So, a particle is projected horizontally with a speed of u metres per second from a point 122 metres above a horizontal plane. Particle hits a plane at a point with a horizontal distance of 90 metres from the starting point. So, a diagram. Projected horizontally. Which obviously is going to follow a trajectory like this. Which is 90 metres from horizontal distance of 90 metres from the start. We're also told it's 122.5 metres above the horizontal. So this distance here must be 122.5 metres. What we need to do is to find the initial speed of the particle. So let's resolve vertically, taking downwards as my positive direction. Writing out the bits of information that I know. 122.5, initial velocity in vertical direction is 0, V I don't know, A is 9.8, and T is, do I, am I told? No, I'm not told, so I'm going to leave that as T. So, um, S equals UT plus half AT squared. 122.5 equals 0 t plus a half of 9.8 times t squared. 122.5 equals 4.9 t squared. And therefore the square root of 122.5 over 4.9 will get me my value of t. So I type that in. Square root of. Five. Nice round number. Five seconds. So once I know that, I know that when I resolve horizontally, that S equals VT. Remember V here being my speed and S being my, uh, my displacement. So I have gone 90 metres in the horizontal direction. V we don't know, that's what we're looking for. And therefore it's u times t, which we just worked out was 5. Therefore 90 divided by 5 gets me my value of u. So u is 18 metres per second. So we have looked at examples where a particle is projected horizontally. Um, however, these next two examples are going to be where the particle is projected at an angle. So here is example four. A particle is projected from a point on a horizontal plane with an, uh, with an, sorry, an initial velocity of 40 metres per second at an angle theta above the horizontal. Tan theta is equal to three quarters. So I need a diagram to help me to understand what's going on. Here's my horizontal and it's been projected on the plane at an angle of alpha. Okay, so with an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. Tan alpha is three quarters. Therefore, I know that sine alpha is three fifths and cos alpha is four fifths. I know that just as a reminder from my triangle, right angle triangle, with that being alpha, opposites three, adjacents four, Pythagoras works out to that to be five. So now I've got that information, I can continue the question. Find the horizontal and vertical components of the initial velocity. So horizontal component, um, is this part here, which we know is going to be 
40 cos alpha. I know cos alpha is 4 fifths, so 40 times 4 fifths, that gets me a value of 32 metres per second. My vertical component is obviously that part there. So that is 40 sine alpha, which is 40 times 3 fifths, because I'm taking that from here, which gets me an initial velocity in the y direction of 24 meters per second. Now, obviously, that's quite um, cramped up in the diagram. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say in my horizontal direction, my initial velocity is 32 meters per second. And in my vertical direction, my initial velocity is 24 meters per second. So that's all I needed to do for part A. And then part B, it says, given that vectors I and J are unit vectors acting in the vertical plane, horizontally and vertical, express the initial velocity as a vector in terms of I and J. So I is my horizontal um, component. So my vector is going to be 32I plus 24J metres Per second and that's it in vector form. And now for question uh, example 5. A particle is projected with velocity u equals 3i plus 5j meters per second. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw that on. 3i, so 3 in the x direction and 5 in the y direction because it's 5j. Um, find the initial speed of the particle and its angle of projection. So the angle of projection from the horizontal will be that theta. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So I know tan theta is my opposite over my adjacent and therefore theta is inverse tan of 5 thirds so theta inverse tan of 5 thirds gets me 59.0362434 so I'm going to say 59 degrees to two significant figures um, find the initial speed so I need to find the value of u I know that the speed is the magnitude of ve the velocity vector so the speed is the square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared which is the square root of 9 plus 25 which is the square root of 34 I'm going to keep it in exact form, so I'm just going to leave it as that. So the initial velocity is, or initial speed in, I can't spell, initial speed is root 34 metres per second at an angle of 59 degrees above the horizontal okay so on to the next section which the book calls projection at any angle um, what they've got in the book for you is a diagram that looks a little bit like this so when um, a particle has been projected at an angle you will have a standard sort of trajectory that looks like that now the starting point at the origin is here and this is where it lands the horizontal distance here is called the range 
Now, the sentence, and I have just copied this from the book, but I've written it down so you've got it there in front of you. Um, it says, a projectile reaches its greatest height when the vertical component of its velocity is equal to zero. So basically, at that maximum point there, that is the maximum height, obviously, in the vertical direction. And at this point here, the velocity of the vertical component is zero okay so that's the information um looking at examples now i did when i've worked through these examples obviously i've worked through them before i've done the videos um some of them are really quite tricky um but we will get there and we'll do it together so this is the first one particle is projected from point o on a horizontal plane with speed 80, uh, sorry, 28 metres per second. So, drawing myself a diagram for this. Suddenly decided to get my ruler out. Don't know why. Um, so, I have got a um, speed, sorry, at zero uh, at O of 28 meters per second with an angle of elevation of 30 degrees um, before I go any further what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work out the horizontal and the vertical components so here's my horizontal component that is going to be 28 cos 30 and my vertical component is going to be 28 sine 30 okay so after projection the particle moves freely under gravity until it strikes the plane at point a so i'm just going to draw that in it's gone up like that and it then comes back down and reaches the ground at point a part a of the question says find the greatest height above the plane reached by p Therefore, I want that value of the height there. So, resolving vertically, I'm taking up as my positive direction because it's going to be projected upwards. And I'm looking for the greatest height, which will obviously be above the ground, which is why I've taken that as my positive direction. I have got my displacement from where I start is going to be my greatest height, which I've called h here. My initial velocity in the vertical direction is 28 sine 30. Um, I know sine 30 is a half, so I'm just going to call 28 sine 30 14, just because it's a bit nicer, a bit easier to um, write down and to work with. I know the greatest height that my final velocity is zero, and I know that my acceleration is minus 9.8 now it's minus 9.8 because i'm working with up as my positive direction so using this information that i've got i'm going to use v squared equals u squared plus 2as filling in the information 0 squared is equal to 14 squared because remember i swapped the u i just worked that out um, plus 2 times minus 9.8 times my height. So I get 0 is 196 minus 19.6 h. Just rearranging this, 19.6 h equals 196. h is 196 divided by 19.6. So the maximum height above the plane reached by p is 10 metres. Part B, the time of flight of P. So, again, I'm going to resolve vertically. And my displacement, by the time it goes up and then comes back down again, my displacement is zero. My initial velocity in my vertical direction, I've worked that out already that's the 14. Um, I'm not interested in V this time, but my acceleration again is minus 9.8. 
because I've taken up as my positive direction and obviously I am looking for a value of T. So I'm going to call that T. Um, using S equals UT plus a half AT squared. My displacement is zero. 14t plus a half times minus 9.8t squared. I get 0 equals 14t minus 4.9t squared. Um, factorising this, I get t, open brackets, 14 minus 4.9t. Therefore, I get t equals 0 or t equals 14 over 4.9 and that gets me a value 14 over 4.9 gets me a value of 2.85714 so t equals 2.9 seconds to two significant figures okay um, part C, just need to get a little piece of paper, sorry, two seconds. Um, part C then asks me for the distance OA, so I need to know what the distance from here to here is. So I am resolving horizontally. I know that the formula that we looked at at the very, very beginning of the video is um, S equals VT, where V is obviously my velocity. So my distance is my horizontal velocity, which is 28 cos 30, times my time value that I worked out here. I'm going to use the full value on my calculator, blah, blah, blah. So type that in to the calculator. So I'm just going to use the answer button because that's the same answer. So 28 cos 30 times by the, my previous answer gets me 40 root 3, which is 69.2820323. So I get 69 metres to two significant figures. So that one wasn't too bad. Um, I think the next one, example seven, is the hardest one, if I'm honest, simply because of looking at directions of things and how they um, getting the signs right in the right directions. So, particle projected from point O with speed V at an angle of theta. Um, the point is 42.5 metres above the horizontal. So my diagram is going to look a little like this. So this point here is 42.5 metres above the horizontal. It is projected with a speed of V. And an angle of elevation above uh, above the horizontal um, of tan theta, which is four thirds. Now, please watch out here because if I've got that as my theta, my opposite is four this time, and my adjacent is three. My hypotenuse is still five, but because I have got four as my opposite, sine theta is now four fifths and cos theta is 3 fifths. So that's my information. Have I got, oh I need to put this bit on where it says particle strikes the plane at point A. So there we go, there's point A. And um, I need to work out my horizontal components of my velocity and my vertical. So horizontally I am going to have V cos alpha, cos alpha being 3 fifths, so this is 3 fifths V, and my vertical component, which is um, V sine alpha, not alpha, sorry, um, theta, 
theta theta um, v sine theta which is four fifths v okay so we need to show that v equals 20 so most of my information comes from um, vertical the vertical um, components so I am going to resolve vertically um, I'm going to resolve in the up or going up direction as positive because in my velocity it, it gets projected upwards and therefore that's why I'm going to take that because then that becomes uh, stays as a positive velocity so writing down information my displacement is going to be minus 42.5 reason being it starts here which is 42.5 above the horizontal I'm taking up as positive and therefore when it goes down below where it started I'm going to have a negative displacement um, my initial velocity is 4 fifths v I'm not interested in that velocity my acceleration is minus 9.8 because remember I'm taking up as my positive direction and therefore acceleration of gravity which comes down needs to be negative and the time I'm given in the question says 5 seconds after it is projected so um, my time is t there um, because the 5 seconds is where it hits the point a and therefore I'm looking at what the initial speed is for the whole flight time until it hits A. Using that I am going to use S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So minus 42.5 is equal to 4 fifths V times 5 which is my value of T plus a half times negative 9.8 times 5 squared I get minus 42.5 is equal to 4v minus and I am going to type this into my calculator 0.5 times minus 9.8 times 5 squared gets me minus 122.5 I now need to add 122.5 to both sides and that gets me 80 which is equal to 4v and that gets me 20 is my value of v which is what I was looking for as given in the question. So part b, that was part a, find the distance between o and a, well this point here was O in my diagram. I know that this vertical distance here is 42.5. The question is asking me to find the distance between O and A, which is that purple line that I've just drawn in faintly there. So to find out that distance, I need to work out this distance here. So to do that, I am using S equals VT from my horizontal components. Um, so I am using S is equal to, now my horizontal dis, uh, horizontal component for my velocity is my 3 fifths V. So 3 fifths V, which is that value there, which is 20. So all I've done is use that 3 fifths V here. And I'm going to multiply that by the time, which is 5, because that's the time which it hits here. I type that in to my calculator and I get a value of 60 metres. Oops, sorry, there you go, 60 metres. So, all I'm going to do now is to find the value of that purple line that I just drew in using Pythagoras. I have got 42.5. I now know that this is 60 and to work out x, I'm going to do x is the square root of 42.5 squared plus 60 squared x is C 
73.527205885 and therefore the distance, let's not call it x, distance between O and A is 73.5 metres to three significant figures or one decimal place. Um, that one I think is the hardest one simply because of all of these negatives and getting the directions around the right way. Next up is question or example eight. So a particle is projected from point O with speed 35 metres per second at an angle of elevation of 30 degrees. Let's draw a diagram. I'm starting at the ground and initial velocity 35 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees okay drawing the projection there so horizontal component of velocity is 35 cos 30 and vertical component of velocity is 35 sine 30. Okay, lovely. So, um, looking at the question, find the length of time for which the particle is 15 metres or more above zero. So, just to give you um, an idea of what this is going to look like, if I just say that this value here is 15 metres, I'm basically looking at the time at which the particle is above this line. So if I can find out the time at which it first meets 15 metres and then hits 15 metres again, I can do the two times, find the difference of the two times, and that will give me the time that the particle is above that 15 metre line. So, resolving vertically, I want my information. So, my displacement is going to be 15 metres. My initial velocity in the vertical direction is 35 sine 30. Not interested in V. A, I've taken up as positive and therefore... My acceleration is minus 9.8 and T is obviously what I'm looking for. So S equals UT plus a half AT squared. 15 is equal to 35 sine 30. So 30 means uh, or is, is equal to a half and therefore this is just going to be 35 over 2 plus a half times minus 9.8 t squared um, 15 is equal to 35 over 2 t minus 4.9 t squared I have a quadratic here which I'm just going to make the quadratic part positive because I much prefer working with positive um, coefficients of the squared variable and therefore I've added this to both sides and subtracted this from both sides to leave me with that. I'm then going to use my calculator, um, if I can remember how to do it, there we go, and go to that one, that polynomial, power of 2, 4.9 minus 35 over 2, whoops, and 15. When I do that, I get t is equal to 15 over 7 and t is equal to 10 over 7 of a second. Okay, so we know that this obviously is the, the, the shorter time. Oh, you can see my reflection, hello. Um, please don't look at my reflection any further. Um, oh gosh, I've lost my place. This is the shorter time and therefore this must be... I'm cracking myself up now, I'm really sorry. <laughs> this is the shorter time, 
and therefore this is this point here and this is the longer time so that must be that point there therefore the difference between them um, above this up for you, above 15 meters is 15 over 7 minus 10 over 7 which is 5 over 7 of a second there we go that's example 8 done and final example for this section is example 9 quite a big long worded one here so a ball is struck and there's a nice diagram so i'm not going to have to draw that out uh, for the purpose of this um but you might want to draw a slightly larger one in your notes for you so ball is struck by racket at a point a which is two meters above the horizontal ground Immediately after being struck, the ball has velocity as given there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write on here my horizontal velocity, which is 5 metres per second there, and my vertical, which is 8, just to help me when I come to it later. Um, Reading the question, find the greatest height above the ground reached by the ball. So if we, if we take A as zero, I'm basically going to find the height of that. And then I need to remember to add on those two metres at the end. So resolving vertically taking up as positive because it's going to move up and I want the greatest height. Displacement is what I'm looking for. Um, initial velocity in my vertical direction is 8 as shown there. My greatest height, I know that the velocity there is 0 and my acceleration is minus 9.8 because I've taken up as positive. T I don't really need but I'm just going to label it on there because I like to have a full set written down. So formula V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. V is 0, so 0 squared is 8 squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 times my height there. 0 equals 64 minus 19.6H. 19.6 h equals 64 h is 64 divided by 19.6 which i will work out now uh 64 divided by 19.6 which is 3.26530612 remember the question says the greatest height above the ground so that's the greatest height above where it has left point a and therefore i need to add on the two so greatest height above the ground is 3.265 blah 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 plus the two which is 5.265 which is 5.3 metres to two significant figures. Okay, part B. Um, find the speed of the ball as it reaches B. So that is where it um, hits the floor there. So, just going to draw myself a little diagram. I'm going to, because I'm going to have to get rid of that as well. So, um, for part B, I have got, here's the ground, and here is the particle reaching B. I should have drawn that as a bit more straight line, sorry. Oh well, you can kind of get the idea. There we go, uh, that's part B. Now we, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said that the horizontal motion is always at a constant speed, and we were told at the beginning of the question that the horizontal um, part of the um, speed at the beginning was 5. So what I have got here is this part here is 5. I need to work out 
what the speed is of this arrow here. So I am going to need to work out what the vertical component of the um, velocity is to then find the magnitude of this to find the overall speed as it hits the ground. So as this is coming down, I am going to resolve vertically, taking down as my positive direction. So S equals U, uh, sorry, S is... Um, oh, what is S this time? Going back to my original diagram. Um, from my start, my um, displacement I'm taking down as positive, and therefore my displacement is now 2 metres. So um, my displacement is 2. Initial velocity is now negative 8 because it's going up by 8. When I'm taking down as my positive, this is going to have to now be a negative value. Um, v is obviously what I am looking for. A is 9.8 because I'm going down. And I'm not interested in T, but I am just going to write it there as well. So, V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So, V squared is what I'm after. Minus 8 all squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 2. V squared is equal to, and I'm just going to type this in and work that out, so 8 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 2 gets me 103.2. So V is root 103.2. Okay, so I've got that, so that blue there is root 103.2 and now I can find the magnitude of my um, speed. So looking at my right angle triangle that's 5, that's root 103.2. Um, my speed is the magnitude and therefore is the square root of root 103.2 all squared plus 5 squared, which I am just going to type straight into my calculator. So that value there is root 103.2 squared. Now when I square that, I actually just end up with 103.2. So that's what I'm going to type in instead of doing this squared. So I've got the square root of that plus that which gets me 11.32254388 which is 11 meters per second to two significant figures there we go and finally part C the angle, the velocity of the ball makes with the ground as the ball reaches B. So I'm just going to take you back to this diagram here. I'm asked for the angle that the velocity of the ball meets with the makes sorry with the ground as the ball reaches B. So that's the angle that I'm looking for. I'm going to see if I can squeeze this on at the very bottom of my page. So opposite and adjacent, so tan theta is my opposite over my adjacent inverse tan of whatever that is. I'm just going to manage to fit it in. Inverse tan of root 103.2 over 5 gets me this value here, 63.79418747, which is 64 degrees to two significant figures. And there we go, two examples to go. Okay, so on to the very last section now of the chapter. 
and it's looking at projectile motion formulae. You can find them at the bottom of the page on our page 122. Um, but basically, this is what you will need to use for the questions in the chat in the exercise. Um, and what we'll do is we'll look at um, in example 10. It actually gets us to um, derive um, this formula. And also um, in example 11, we end up deriving this formula as well. Um, I just want to say the equation of the trajectory. The trajectory is basically the path at which um, a particle follows once it is um, projected. So um, looking at our example 10 then. Okay, so particle is projected from a point on a horizontal plane with an initial velocity of u at an angle of theta above the horizontal. It moves freely under gravity until it hits a plane at point B. Okay. <coughs> so, um, given that the acceleration due to gravity is g, find expressions for the time of flight t. So, the time of the whole flight. So, if we just add on our horizontal and vertical components of our velocity. This is u cos alpha and this is u sine alpha. Okay, so um, time of flight t, I'm going to resolve vertically and my displacement will be zero because I end up back at the same level as where I have started in the vertical direction. So S U V A T S is zero, my displacement is zero. My initial velocity in the vertical direction is U sine alpha. Not going to worry about V at the moment. My acceleration is minus 9.8 and T is what we want an expression for in terms of capital T. So, um, S equals UT plus half AT squared. Fill in the values, 0 equals U sine alpha, whoops, sine alpha, multiplied by time, plus half times minus 9.8 times t squared. I'm actually going to just leave this as negative g. So I'll write that out again just so we can see that nice and clearly. Plus half times negative g times t squared. Simplifying that I get u sine alpha t minus g over 2 t squared. So factorising t I get u sine alpha minus g over 2 t and then I get t equals 0, well that's the start, starting point when t equals 0, or I get u sine alpha equals g over 2t multiply both sides by 2 and then divide by g I end up with 2u sine alpha all over g gets me t ok part b find the range r which is the x um, distance on the horizontal plane so Resolving horizontally, um, I know S is equal to VT, and so um, S, which is my range, so R is equal to my horizontal component of speed, which is U cos alpha, times by T, which is this part here. 
So I get um, multiplied by 2u sine alpha all over g. So this is my horizontal component of my velocity and this is what I've got for t. I get r is equal to 2u squared sine alpha cos alpha all over g. Um, what I've got here is I have got r equals u squared 2 sine alpha cos alpha all over g. Now you should know that this part here is sine of 2 alpha using your double angle formulae. So r is equal to u squared of sine 2 alpha all over g. Just a reminder that 2 sine alpha cos alpha is equal to sine of 2 alpha. Okay, that is question 10. Um, looking at question 11 then. A particle is projected from a point with speed u at an angle of elevation that moves freely under gravity. When the particle is moved a horizontal distance, its height above the point projection is y. So, show that y equals x tan alpha minus g squared, gx squared, sorry, over blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to keep going on about reading that. You can read that for yourselves. Um, so, um, I'm just going to draw myself a diagram to try and understand what is going on here. So, here is my diagram with my, is it above a point? No, I don't think it is. So, show that. There's my alpha, and there is my um, trajectory. Um, so this value here is u. So my horizontal component is u cos alpha, and my vertical component is u sin alpha. Okay, so um, y is obviously my vertical aspect, so looking at my vertical aspect, I have got to resolve in the vertical direction, S U V A T. So, S is um, y, U is U sine alpha. V, I'm not too worried about. A is going to be negative G because we're going in the opposite direction to um, the gravity because I've taken up as positive. And then T, I'm just going to use T. So S equals UT plus a half AT squared. So Y is equal to U sine alpha plus a half times minus g times t squared. Oh, I forgot the t there. Sorry, that's ut, so u times t. Um, now, I need to get this in terms of x somehow. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to resolve horizontally. I know s is equal to vt. And so I have got s which is going to be x is equal to u cos alpha times t. I'm going to rearrange this to make t the subject because what I can do is I can then put when t is the subject into here. So I've got x over u cos alpha is equal to t. Now I know that I'm going to sub that in here. 
So y is equal to u sine alpha multiplied by x over u cos alpha minus half times g, I'm going to leave that as g over 2, multiplied by t squared, which is x over u cos alpha all squared. So just to tidy this up, y is equal to u sine alpha, no, alpha, multiplied by x over u cos alpha minus g over 2 multiplied by x squared over u squared cos squared alpha. What I've got here, this is just tan alpha, so y is equal to, I'm going to bring this value of x in front as a coefficient of my tan alpha. So this is just tan alpha, so I end up with x tan alpha. Well, that's looking good because I wanted that in the original um, formula in the question. Minus g over 2 multiplied by x squared over u squared. And then here I've got 1 over cos squared alpha. Now, hopefully you remember 1 over cos squared alpha as being... One over, uh, is as being sex squared alpha. So I'm now going to write that with my sex squared in. So x tan alpha stays the same minus gx squared over 2u squared multiplied by sec squared alpha. Okay, looking back at what I want it to look at, look like, sorry. Um, I don't have a sex squared in what the question is wanting me to have, but I do know an identity for sex squared alpha. So, y equals x tan alpha, which I'm already really happy with, um, minus g x squared over 2 u squared. Sex squared alpha becomes 1 plus tan squared alpha, which is exactly what I wanted in part A there. So that's the part A. Part B. Particle is projected on a horizontal plane with a speed 28 metres per second. So I can say that that's my value of u. Um, at an angle of elevation alpha, the particle passes through point B, which is a horizontal distance of 32 metres, so that's my x. A height of 8 metres above the plane, that is my y value. So, now that I know that, I can now use the formula to find the possible values of um, theta, because I can just substitute in my y, my u and my x into the formula I have just found. So, um, let's just y equals x tan alpha. Just writing it out again because I'm going to move this piece of paper in a minute just so that it can all fit in. And we already identified u was 28 x was 32 meters and y was 8 meters. Okay, so uh, substituting all of this into the formula, I get 8 is equal to 32 tan alpha minus g times 32 squared over 2 times 28 squared, lots of 1 plus tan squared alpha. So 8 is equal to 32 tan alpha minus, and finding my value of this, g is 9.8, so 9.8 times 32 squared over 2 times 28 squared gets me 32 over 5, 
1 plus tan squared alpha and now I'm just going to expand so 8 is equal to 32 tan alpha minus 32 over 5 minus 32 over 5 tan squared alpha I have got a quadratic because I've got a squared tan uh, a power of 1 tan let's say and um, just a constant on its own so I'm going to rearrange and make my squared term positive so I'm going to add this to both sides add this to both sides and subtract this from both sides so I get 32 over 5 tan squared alpha minus 32 tan alpha and then I'm just going to do 8 add 32 over 5 which gets me add 72 over 5 that's equal to 0 because I've rearranged to make this all over here okay so now I have got a quadratic I'm going to type this into my calculator to get me my two values of alpha so using this wonderful function on the calculator um, there we go so a is 32 over 5 B is minus 32 and C is 72 over 5 I then get tan alpha is equal to 9 over 2 and it is also equal to a half so the question that was asked at the beginning was find the two possible values of alpha giving your answer to the nearest degree well now I've got that I can find out my alpha values by doing inverse tan of both of those figures so inverse tan of 9 over 2 gets me 77.47119229 so alpha is 77 degrees to the nearest degree and then for this one inverse tan of 0.5 gets me 26.56505118 which is 27 degrees to the nearest degree and that is it for projectiles i really do hope that my explanations of all of those examples have helped you um, that is it as promised we have finished mechanics by easter so really really well done guys um keep working hard you are amazing you are fantastic and i do wish you all the very 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 best for your futures bye